Us doctors are always talking about the importance of prevention. When it comes to your health, preventive is better than reactive. And there are screening tests that can pick up things like cancer before they become dangerous, but the ultimate way to look inside your body for anything that might be lurking in there is to get a full body MRI. So that should be the best screening test you could possibly get. But I'm gonna tell you why it's not and why you should think twice before getting one. Let's get into it. So it sounds obvious, right? Take the test, find the cancer, take it out, and you're cured. Why wouldn't you do it? Ever since Kim Kardashian posted about it, a lot of people have been talking about this, and a lot of people have been getting full body MRIs. And it's very seductive because the principle behind it is very sound. Early detection of something like cancer could logically save lives by catching it before it spreads. And we do this for certain cancers. We screen with pap smears to prevent cervical cancer, we do colonoscopy for colon cancer, and now we do CAT scans of the chest for lung cancer. But as opposed to a whole body MRI in a perfectly healthy and low risk person, those tests are always done in people who have a risk for those cancers. And even more importantly, those are tests that have been studied extensively and proven to save lives. Many other screening tests have not been shown to save lives, and that list includes whole body MRI. On the contrary, it can actually lead to a lot of harm and even death. But how can that be? So let's start this discussion off with the help of my friend, Timothy Caulfield. Tim is a professor at the University of Alberta, and he studies how health science is represented to the public. Look, the, the whole idea of screening scans has been around for a really long time. Uh, before we had the MRI technology that we have today, uh, there was another technology called CAT scans that had a similar a similar trend. Uh, this goes back like 25 years, uh, and in fact, Oprah had an entire show on it. Talking about this fascinating new health test uh, called full body scan. The test allows doctors to see inside your body and detect any unknown diseases that might be lurking there long before you can feel any kind of sickness. Look, and it became really really popular, just like today where we have Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton pushing MRI scans. You know, back then we had Oprah and people like William Shatner pushing the whole body CAT scan. Um, and companies started popping up to, to push this technology. But eventually, eventually, you know, good science and the evidence and people's experiences highlighted that this trend was actually doing more harm than good. Now, the major knock on CAT scans is that they expose you to a lot of radiation. A whole body CAT scan is hundreds of times more radiation than, for example, a chest x-ray. And paradoxically, that radiation from that test that you're doing to prevent cancer can actually cause cancer. It's estimated that anywhere from two to 5% of all cancers in the US are caused by radiation exposure from CAT scans. Now, to be fair, MRI is a better technology. It doesn't use radiation. It uses magnetic fields to get a signal from the water molecules in our body. And since our body is about 60% water, it actually gives better images of many of our internal organs or what we call soft tissues compared to CAT scans. But there are still two major problems with whole body MRIs. The first problem is what we call false positives. These scans are a little too good. They pick up every tiny bump or dot or scar in your body. And most people think that's a good thing. Information is power. But that's only true if you actually know what that information means. People think doctors will know exactly what they're looking at on those images. The reality is far from that. We usually have a long list of possible explanations for abnormalities that we see on an MRI, and that list will include a whole bunch of benign things and a few dangerous things. For example, sometimes you can't tell if something is just a scar versus a deadly cancer. We call these things incidentalomas because they're discovered incidentally, and we actually have no idea what they are. Most of these are what we call false positives. The scan is positive because it found something, but what it found is benign, it's meaningless. Believe it or not, most of us are walking around with all sorts of tiny abnormalities or anatomic variations within our bodies, and that's just fine. But if you start scanning everyone, you are going to find them. This is a systematic review published in 2020, looking at 12 different studies with more than 6,000 whole body MRIs, and 95% of people had some type of abnormal finding. 30% required further investigations. 
And that's the crux of the problem. Although 99% of those findings were benign, 30% of the people went through the anxiety of being told it could have something serious, then they went through the hassle of getting those tests, and believe it or not, the extra test we often do to investigate an abnormality is a CAT scan, which, like we talked about, exposes you to that radiation that can then give you cancer. Even worse, some people will need a biopsy. Sometimes that biopsy will be inconclusive, and those people will need surgery. And when it's all said and done, we've often put someone through all of that just to remove a completely benign blob of tissue. And all of those things cost money. But even more than that, they expose you to pain, suffering, and the risk of complications. And it's often a chain reaction. I'll see something in your lung, I'll do a lung biopsy, that causes your lung to collapse, then I need to put in a tube to re-expand it, then the tube causes an infection, and the antibiotics I give you cause a severe allergic reaction. Of course, the biopsy results come back when you're in the ICU, and the good news is it's benign, but the bad news is none of this had to happen. So that's an extreme example, but complications happen all the time. But what if your scan did pick up a cancer? It did exactly what it was supposed to do, right? Unfortunately, in most cases, it still wouldn't help you. And that has to do with the second big problem, which is called overdiagnosis. Overdiagnosis is when we find something real, like cancer, but the thing we found would never have caused any symptoms or led to death. In other words, whatever we found was never actually going to harm you, which means knowing about it isn't actually going to help you. And that's not intuitive, because for something like cancer, most people think it has one outcome. You get it, it grows, it spreads, and eventually it kills you. But that's not actually the case. There are so-called indolent cancers. These are cancers that actually grow very slowly. In some ways, they're a cancer only in name. They look like a cancer under a microscope, but they're not aggressive. Imagine 35-year-old Cindy who gets a full-body MRI. They find this thyroid cancer, so she has surgery to have her thyroid removed. Then she gets radiation. Then she has to take thyroid medication for the rest of her life, but she's happy because she's cancer-free. And she thinks the MRI saved her life. She lives to 85 and dies of heart disease. That's a happy ending. But what if I told you that if Cindy didn't have the MRI, the cancer would never be found and would never cause symptoms. She would never need the surgery or the radiation or to be on thyroid meds for the rest of her life, and she would still live to 85 and die of heart disease. She would die with the cancer, not of the cancer. That's a cancer that was overdiagnosed, and the MRI actually harmed her. And you know you're overdiagnosing when you find more cancers in a population but you don't actually increase how long those people live for. For example, a US study found that when they did more abdominal scans, they picked up more kidney cancers, and more people had their kidneys removed and required radiation and chemotherapy. But their survival didn't change, so we hadn't actually helped them. In South Korea, they started screening for thyroid cancer, and detection of thyroid cancer increased 15 times. But deaths from thyroid cancer never changed. The same problem has been shown with melanoma, with prostate cancer, and with breast cancer. All of those are cancers that can be dangerous, but they're often just indolent and slow-growing. And unfortunately, doctors often can't tell which cancer is going to be aggressive and which one won't, so once we identify it, we have no choice but to take it out. And just like the false positive result, that overdiagnosis has all sorts of health consequences. It means unnecessary tests and procedures, all the side effects and risks of cancer surgery and cancer treatment. It also means the mental health impact of thinking of yourself as a cancer patient for the rest of your life. And the internet is full of stories from people who think that the MRI saved their life. Kim Kardashian said it saved some of her friends' lives. And those are really powerful stories. But no individual can know if they were personally overdiagnosed, and statistically, many of those people who think they were saved by the MRI were actually harmed by it. This is why, based on the studies that have been done, experts advise against whole-body MRI. The American College of Preventive Medicine, which is the group of doctors and scientists that specializes in preventing diseases, specifically said, don't use whole-body scans for early tumor detection in asymptomatic patients. Even the American College of Radiology, which is the group of doctors that stands to benefit the most, from all those MRIs and all the scans that inevitably come after, don't recommend it outside of people with very specific conditions or risks. But just because doctors tell you not to get it, it doesn't mean that private companies can't offer it. And a lot of companies are making a lot of money from this. In many ways, they're preying on people's fears. They often acknowledge that there's no medical evidence for it, but they argue that by doing thousands of scans, they'll be able to improve the technology 
which will ultimately lead to less false positives and less overdiagnosis and better results. And they may be right, but until then, do you want to pay thousands of dollars to effectively be their guinea pig? It's like they said in this episode of Scrubs. I am considering offering full body scans here at Sacred Heart. What do you think? I think showing perfectly healthy people every harmless imperfection in their body just to scare them into taking invasive and often pointless tests is an unholy sin. Does sound a little sketchy ethically, doesn't it? Thanks, Barry. Did that just happen? So every now and then, a full body MRI will pick up a terrible and treatable condition in a healthy person just in time to save them from it. But the chances of that happening to you are lower than your risk of dying in a car accident. Thousands of times more often, the test will find a false positive or it'll diagnose a cancer that would have laid dormant and never affected you. Many people do the test because they want peace of mind and they want to take control of their health. But what ends up happening is often the opposite. They're filled with anxiety and they enter a cascade of tests and treatments that they have no control over. And what that does is essentially turns a well person into a patient. Prevention is better than cure, but MRI is not prevention. There's no evidence of benefit, there is evidence of harm. Testing leads to more testing, which leads to all sorts of worry and anxiety and cost and sometimes actual physical harms. Eventually, science will get better at figuring out what findings on an MRI are dangerous and what can be ignored. Maybe artificial intelligence will get us there. But until then, to avoid cancer, make healthy lifestyle choices and get the targeted screening that's been proven to save lives and that your doctor recommends. So think twice before you get that full body MRI. You may think it's a crystal ball, but it's actually a Pandora's box. Thanks to Tim for his insights. Thanks to Choosing Wisely Canada for supporting this video. And for more on health and science, subscribe to the feed.